Imagine being in the cockpit of a military aircraft soaring through the sky on a mission when suddenly an incoming missile threatens to bring your entire world down. The only option you have is to use every tool in your arsenal to avoid certain death in a split second. You deploy a flare, diverting the missile with a bright flash of light and intense heat, and your aircraft remains miraculously unscathed. This is the power of flares, a tiny pyrotechnic life-saving device that protects aircraft from danger in the skies. If you can't tell, today is a deep dive into the development and application of flares as a first line of defense against missiles. Let's start with the basics. Military aircraft flares are small pyrotechnic devices that emit bright light and a lot of heat when they are activated. They protect aircraft from incoming missiles by distracting the missile or confusing its guidance system. There are two main types of flares, pyrotechnic and pyrophoric. Pyrotechnic flares are the ones that give off a bright white light and smoke when they're set off. They ignite and release a lot of infrared energy for about 5 to 10 seconds to distract and fool a missile seeker. But pilots have to be careful. These guys can start fires if they land on the ground before they've burned out. Unfortunately, little has been done to address wildfire concerns. That is something to be improved sooner than later, as natural resources are diminishing from the increased risk of fast-spreading fires worldwide. In comparison to pyrotechnic flares, pyrophoric flares are more low-key. They're small pieces of foil that oxidize quickly, meaning they rust and produce heat, then cool down as they fall to the ground as metal debris. The widely used MU-27AB flares operate in this manner. Heat-seeking missiles are designed to target an aircraft's infrared radiation emissions, and that's where these ingenious flares come in. If everything goes according to plan, the anti-aircraft missile will chase after the flare and leave the aircraft alone, allowing it to fly on safely, a hero to the rescue. Of course, military aircraft flares are designed with safety in mind. The flares are made of materials that burn at a high temperature without producing toxic fumes or dangerous shrapnel. This means that even if the flares are activated close to the aircraft, there is minimal risk of damage to the aircraft or its crew. What a relief. Modern warfare is more akin to a complex game of fast-paced chess than the actual on-the-ground fighting most people imagine. Each side develops new technology to defeat their opponents while also working as quickly as possible to defend against the latest threats being used against them. Much like the code writers and breakers that were the hidden forces behind World War II, there is a team of devoted professionals working at breakneck speed to develop new defenses against missiles behind the scenes of aircraft warfare. The U.S. Army, for example, has a countermeasures and flares branch devoted entirely to the development of more sophisticated tools pilots can use in the case of missile attacks. The team uses either digital representations of missiles or actual threat hardware to evaluate digital representations of countermeasures like flares. Before advanced computer modeling was available, the primary method for developing flare technology was to fly an aircraft, track it with missile hardware, deploy flares, and observe how the missile responded. This method was expensive, labor-intensive, and time-consuming. For years, militaries lacked the agility to protect against constantly evolving missile threats. We definitely have to pay our respects to the tech geeks as experts can now test new chemical formulas and deployment systems as quickly as they can envision them. As a result, the arsenal of aircraft flares has evolved from glorified bottle rockets to highly specialized tools. When used defensively against missile attacks, flares go through three main stages, ignition, deployment, and decoying. The first stage is ignition. Pyrotechnic flares like the MJU-32 need to be lit from the outside, which is safer because if something goes wrong in storage, it won't cause a fire on board. On the other hand, when exposed to air, pyrophoric flares like the MJU-27AB ignite on their own. That's a convenient feature. and they're stored in airtight compartments to prevent catastrophic accidents on board the aircraft. 
Next is deployment. Since most flares are stored and dispensed from a compartment inside the plane, the pilot or ground crew can set the dispenser to release flares one at a time, all at once, or in a specific pattern. Pyrotechnic flares require a lanyard attached to a cap, which is pulled off automatically as the flares drop from the dispenser. When the cap comes off, it rubs against the flare, just like striking a match to ignite it. Last stage, decoying, aka how flares work to trick incoming IR or infrared homing missiles. These are also commonly known as heat-seeking missiles. IR-guided missiles can be sneaky when it comes to attacking aircrafts. They don't give off any detectable radar signals and usually approach from behind, aim straight at the engines. Pilots often rely on their wingmen to look for the missile's smoke trail and give them a heads up. And for those with more advanced equipment, some systems can detect a missile launch by picking up the heat signature from the missile's rocket motor. Flares burn at seriously high temperatures, like thousands of degrees, and that's a lot hotter than a typical jet engine's exhaust. So when an IR missile comes along, it thinks the hotter flame is actually the aircraft's afterburner or the beginning of the engine's exhaust source. But here's the rub. Newer IR missiles have been designed to match the emissions of airplanes more closely so they can reject other sources. So, in response to that, the latest generation of flares have also been optimized to match the radiation of the aircraft, mainly its engines and exhaust. But these missiles can also discriminate based on the trajectory of the source and its size. Welcome to the world of counter-counter measures. See what we mean about the chess game? The latest version of the FIM-92 Stinger missile has a dual IR and UV seeker head which means it can track its target using two different methods. This makes it harder for modern flares to trick the missile. Even though researchers have been able to create flares with an IR signature that's on the same wavelength as a hot engine exhaust, they still produce a different UV signature than an aircraft engine burning kerosene. There's still some work to be done in this field. Aircraft flares are often discussed with another line of defense called chaff. Not all missiles are heat-seeking, some, called radar-guided missiles, follow their target based on radar position. Deploying pyrophoric flares won't work against these missiles as they don't respond to heat. To defend against radar-guided missiles, a different countermeasure is needed. Meet chaff, a countermeasure used since the Second World War. Chaff is used on most modern military aircrafts and other targets like warships to protect against radar-guided missiles. Chaff is made up of tiny, thin bits of aluminum, metallic glass fiber, or plastic. Like flares, it can be deployed on command and appears in the air as a cloud of small targets to incoming missiles. Because both airplanes and missiles are made of metal, they tend to have a radar signature that allows enemies to locate their position with a reasonable degree of accuracy. Most radar-guided missiles find their targets this way. But when you introduce chaff, the missile's guidance system can become confused by the increase in the radar signature. Thanks, tiny metal bits. As a result, the missile will hopefully hit one of those small new targets instead of the plane. Chaff and flares are just some tools of many that keep military aircraft safe from missiles in combat. But in modern warfare, where civilians are often casualties of combat, some experts are considering expanding the use of flare technology. In 2019, FedEx filed a request with the FAA to install an infrared laser system on some of its aircraft to defend against heat-seeking missiles. Without explicit guidelines to address the possibility, the FAA initially responded to the request by opening the issue to public comment, but quickly withdrew that decision citing the need for further internal study. It wasn't the first time a non-military aviation company wanted to use missile countermeasures. In 2002, Israeli airline EIAI was the target of a failed missile attack during takeoff in Mombosa, Kenya. By 2004, the airline began installing anti-missile systems called Flight Guard on its planes that flew routes over hostile areas. The reaction to EIAI's new tech wasn't very positive. Many European airports banned the aircraft from landing there, 
forcing EIAI to rethink its approach. The Israeli Airlines planes are now equipped with Sea Music, a pod located on the aircraft's lower fuselage that includes an electro-optical missile warning system, jamming turret, and laser generator. While no other international airlines have followed EIAI's lead, there are still plenty of supporters of adding this tech to civilian planes. Man Portable Air Defense Systems, or MAN pads, have fallen into the hands of dozens of non-state groups worldwide. The heat-seeking surface-to-air missiles just take 6 to 10 seconds from launch to impact, are easily transportable, and could be used with little training. These units have hit about 60 commercial airplanes since the 1960s, killing over a thousand people. Fans of EIAI's proactive approach to defend against missiles say that this safety net should be standard on every aircraft. But opponents cite the increased weight, impact on aerodynamics, and maintenance expenses as downsides the flying public shouldn't have to put up with or pay for. With missile counter-countermeasures advancing every day and the growing threat from global terrorist groups in recent years, we may live to see the day when every commercial aircraft is equipped with an anti-missile system. Until then, we'll leave the flares to the military and admire them in Hollywood action movies.